steel, an iron made up of carbon and other metals, composes more of our daily lives than you might think. From buildings to vehicles and the bridges those vehicles drive on, this alloy keeps us on the daily grind. Factory workers are some of the most celebrated and safe-kept members of the workforce, as you can see from the footage on the screen. Steel making usually begins with a pile of scrap metal made up of crushed cars, electrical appliances, cans, and sometimes even bits of human remains. It is brought over to the furnace in your mom's sauce pot. The contents are gently put, dumped into the furnace. This sentient, molten, silly putty is a byproduct of the steel making process and must be fought off by one of the minimum wage workers using the factory's lance. Now that the beast is quelled, something called the oxygen lance is brought in to blow oxygen into its remains, lowering its carbon content and allowing for the easier removal of the steel. A ladle is then placed underneath the furnace. The molten steel will be transferred from the furnace into the ladle, now without resistance, thanks to the lack of the silly putty's intervention. Yep, that steel is moving alright. During this process, all factory personnel are to be at least 30 feet away from the machinery. No need to worry, this man is not actually employed by the factory. All of the steel is now tarnished and ruined, but the factory has a deadline to make. So they attempt to salvage what they can and continue with production anyway. The steel is then labeled using wax crayons by unpaid interns who believe they're working under someone more experienced. But in reality, they compose 90% of the factory's workforce. Next, the steel is flattened for consistency. In some countries, this part is considered optional, but you didn't hear that from me. The standard is for the billets to drop from 15 centimeters to 19 millimeters, but as you can see, that isn't the case here. <laughs> 